Well, I want to welcome everybody uh, back to session two of our Watershed Summit on behalf of the McCall, Donnelly, and Cascade Chamber of Commerce, the Valley Soil and Water Conservation District, Big Payette Lake Water Quality Council Incorporated, and Friends of Lake Cascade. Uh, my name is Gary Thompson, and I'll be the moderator today. Uh, we're going to spend the next few minutes just kind of reviewing what we what happened last time and a few of the takeaways, and we'll talk about what's going to happen for the rest of the day today. Um, as Governor Little mentioned in the last session, good water quality is fundamental to prosperity in Idaho. So as we go forward today in session two of our four-part educational webinar series, uh, we're going to start building towards background knowledge for a strategic planning process to provide information for future use. These sessions are a unique opportunity for all of us to learn from specialists and watershed decision makers. The ultimate goal of these webinars is to improve our watershed water quality and our way of life here in the Valley. The expectation is that after we go back to some semblance of normal post COVID life, we're gonna to get together in a breakout sessions and we can use this information and um, use that, let that inform some decision making and a part of a larger collaborative process. Uh, as a recap of session one, and I should also highlight if you go to the Valley Soil and Water Conservation District website, there are the previous mentioned uh, webinar session and the recordings can be found there. Uh, and Mackenzie, if you can, can you put that in the, maybe put it in the Q&A chat and just make that available. Um, as a recap, our session one presenters highlighted some great watershed restoration concepts for us to consider. Um, our mayors expressed common values for clean water quality and the need for education, collaboration, and practical solutions. Uh, we were reminded that historical lessons learned are important. Reducing sediment and nutrient inputs are needed to meet state pollution goals. We need to improve our understanding of algal blooms modifying lake water storage levels could potentially lower water temperatures. Reducing water temperature is important for fish habitat and algae bloom management. Improved sport fishing opportunities comes with healthier water. We need to understand wildfires and how they affect water quality down the road, and we can expect increased cultural pressure on our lakes and in our forest. Uh, overall, the feedback from session one was fantastic. Um, I think people were very positive about having this opportunity to look at these issues and to be able to participate as an attendee and put their questions forward to our experts. We need to thank our sponsors, the McCall, Donnelly and Cascade Chambers of Commerce, the Valley Soil and Water Conservation District, Mop and Homes, the Star News, the McCall Cascade Store, Big Payette Lake Water Quality Council Incorporated, Pam and Ralph Thier and Friends of Lake Cascade. With that said, we are going to get to our first presenter, uh, John Dixon. John, thank you for joining us today. I'm gonna to do a brief um, run on your bio and then we'll go to you. Uh, John is a foil, uh, excuse me, John Dixon is a forest soil scientist with Payette National Forest, uh, working in the McCall and Crassel Ranger districts as a hydrologist, I believe. He has served in these positions for the last six years and has 25 years of experience working in the Forest Service throughout the Pacific North Northwest. He has a master's degree in environmental soil sciences from Oregon State University. His interest in clean flowing water continues to influence his vocational and recreational interest. With that, John, we are going to you. Okay, thank you. Can, is my screen uh, showing up good there? It looks great, John. All right. Well, thank you for the opportunity to uh, present today for the those folks that are have organized the summit and uh, Gary for for moderating. Um, this is a, a picture off of uh, just north of Brundage Mountain, um, looking into the upper North Fork Bay of Watershed. And as you can see, um, to the east there are the Salmon River Mountains, high elevation granitic peaks. And uh, this is this is the headwaters to the North Fork Payette. So the general outline today <clears throat> I'm going to take is uh, talk about the North Fork uh, Payette River watershed 
and the de delineation of what I thought was the area of interest, which, uh, which is upstream of Cascade Reservoir. Then I'll look at uh, basin characteristics and general land ownership within that, uh, within the basin. And then I'll talk briefly on about our forest plan and how um, it gives us direction uh, through management prescriptions um, over, over a lot of, uh, across the forest. And then I'll talk briefly about land management activities that are ongoing and, uh, and possible future activities that would include uh, the Mill Fork Dam watershed. And then the second part of the, the uh, presentation will talk about uh, watershed condition framework. It's a methodology to, to rate and rank uh, sub watersheds. It's a, a national, um, national methodology and it, it offers you a, uh, a way to um, rank out watersheds on uh, whether they're functioning uh, properly, functioning at risk, or uh, have an impaired function. So when I was asked to present, I, I was trying to uh, at least frame the, the watershed basin based on what I'd heard about the concerns and primarily it was uh, Cascade Lake Reservoir. And so I selected an area below that using stream stats and that, that captures the watershed basin above upstream of that point. And you can see where I selected was just below the, the Cascade Reservoir Dam. And that's in the yellow on the map to the right. And this is using a stream stats, a map user, a map based user interface. And it gives, gives you basic uh, basin characteristics that are interesting, as well as uh, flow statistics uh, for, for uh, looking at uh, discharges um, within this basin. Um, so here's a, a few the characteristics. So we, the basin on average is the mean average precipitation is 38 inches a year. Now the vast majority of that comes comes to us in snow. I'd say 70 to 80 percent of that. And that's a, a, a huge storage for water that's slowly released, um, sometimes quickly in the spring, and then uh, is stored in our reservoirs and lakes for, for uh, recreation as well as irrigation use. The, the basin's kind of unique in that um, um, the upper payout uh, watershed is, is probably some of the highest water yields on the forest, and it's due mostly to the high elevation and uh, in granitic um, geology. The average basin elevation is about 6,000 feet. The highest point is Storm Peak at nine, with just over 9,000 feet. And then the land allocation is mostly covered in forest, 60%, and then lakes and ponds make up eight. And then agriculture, another nine, and then other uh, other other uh, interests such as residential, commercial, rec other recreation lands make up about 23 percent. So one one important aspect is to uh, consider the, this area is the ownership of the of the roughly 400,000 acres. Half is half is administered and managed by the U.S. Forest Service. Of that half. Um, Three quarters is managed by the Payette National Forest, and that's predominantly on the Cull District. And then the other quarter of that is managed by the Boise National Forest. Um, in the in the valley bottom, um, it's predominantly private private ownership, and that's in the white, and then the very light green. And then between those two, Forest Service and private land ownerships, is the state of Idaho manages about 11 percent of the basin. And then there's uh, various U.S. Bureau of Reclamation and some lands, and then the rest is uh, lakes and rivers. Um, I'm just going to talk briefly about the the Payette National Forest Plan and Resource Forest uh, Land and Resource Management Plan. This gives us um, kind of direction for managing the forest, and knowing some of the background kind of gives us will give us insight into some of the um, Later in the presentation, some of the condition ratings that we have for our sub basin within the watershed. And so the plan gives us uh, management goals, object objectives, as resource protection methods, and, and uh, desired future uh, conditions, and, and provides direction on availability and suitability of land for resource management. 
So the force is divided into 14 management areas. <clears throat> and these are, and the two that are uh, within the um, North Fork Payette or the Payette Lakes uh, management area and the Kenley management area. And those are two maps to the right. And they're roughly geographically uh, situated there. Um, and then within those, the colored, the colored uh, uh, polygons on those maps are management prescription areas. And these provide direction um, um, specifically to those to those parcels within land parcels within those management areas. And I'll go I'll go quickly through some of those. So here again is our map um, on the right of the upper North Fork Payette watershed. And then a table that represents um, that describes the management prescription category um, and they're numbered and then they're also colored. Um, so we've got the acres within uh, the uh, entire watershed and acres within national forest lands. And so these uh, prescription categories um, are uh, a broad base category, or broad category, excuse me. Oh, here we go. So, um, recommended wilderness is not a wilderness designation, but their lands that are met, managed for those values. And uh, it's they're mostly on the higher elevations that lie between <clears throat> North Fork Bay and the Salmon River. And they're, they're also inventory road districts. The other uh, two major um, parts of management prescription um, categories are passive restoration and active restoration. And these are intended to maintain the aquatic terrestrial aquatic resources. Um, although you can do you, you can do various management uh, treatments as long as you maintain um, those resources and particularly uh, threatened endangered um, species in their habitats. Um, the next one is undeveloped recreation and that is um, pretty much um, management for the, the roadless characteristics. And then the other two, the 5.1, restoration maintenance and emphasis within forest and landscapes is a category that, uh, that is allowed for vegetation management with um, an emphasis for restoration, but it, but it does allow for commodities and that's, that's um, primarily uh, our roaded areas historically have been uh, timber production lands. And then 5.2 five, five is commodity production with a little higher uh, emphasis on commodity production. And so um, of that, you can see the percentages that those two categories make them make include the majority of that uh, percentage of NPCs on national forest lands. And they are lower in elevation, hence more productive um, and accessible. Um, and so, Knowing, knowing some background about how our, our forest plan directs our management in this area gives us some insight on, on what those watershed conditions would be. And we'll come back to this here later. Um, so just touch on some current management activities um, within the, the, the greater watershed. And one of the biggest ones is recreation, close proximity to Donnelly, Cascade, and McCall. Um, these, are, these areas are readily available for recreationists, camping, hiking, horseback riding, horse riding, motorized uh, trail riding, skiing, snowmobiling, hunting, just to name a few, as well as um, grazing. And uh, <clears throat> there's 3,000 used lambs and 3,000 yearlings um, that go up about mid-July, make their way through the valley, and then end up, up in the higher country into uh, mid-October. Um, there's noxious weed treatments. We're actively treating noxious weeds throughout the watershed, mostly through using chemicals and some mechanical. And then we have uh, a little bit of vegetation management um, that's occurring within the Kenley area, and that's our 5.1 lands. So that's uh, uh, timber timber based lands with a restoration emphasis. And so that's about a 3,000 acre um, vegetation management project with underburning and uh, timber sales as well as some uh, road decommissioning restoration 
and that's uh, dealing with um, some of the insects and disease issues we've had uh, locally here. And then there's some fire management. Uh, this historically, the Black Wolf Corral fire happened in the headwaters, and that was in 1994. And it, uh, most people know that that area burned pretty hot and uh, is recovering quite well right now. Um, <clears throat> and then the more recent uh, rapid fire in 2015 occurred in the Henry Creek area also. And then there's also ongoing road trail facilities and uh, uh, maintenance uh, ongoing. I was asked to kind of uh, at least mention um, some of our future management land um, activities that uh, will be occurring in this area. And, and um, one of them is, is the West Central Idaho Initiative. It's a collaborative forest landscape restoration um, project that covers a large area and surrounds the North Fork Paya upper watershed. It's a project area of about 2.3 million acres and 1.6 million is located on the Payette and Boise. And so over the next five years, there could be up to $20 million allocated through that period of time. And that's dependent upon congressional uh, budgets. Um, we could see that as early as next year. Um, activities within this area would be um, obviously uh, a variety of treatments, restoration treatments ranging from vegetation treatment um, restoration activities such as road decommissioning. It could include um, where those where those management areas uh, direct us. Um, timber sales too. So now I'm going to kind of switch gears and, and talk about watershed condition framework and how this applies to those sub watersheds within the North Fork Payette. Um, the watershed condition framework. Um, it focuses on improving the condition of watershed and national forest system lands. It's a comprehensive approach and it looks at uh, classifying watershed condition, um, implementing restoration opportunities and priorities in watersheds and tracking and monitoring the water restoration accomplishments. It's a management tool that can be communicated to the public very well. It's, it's a interface uh, on the web and then um, it can also inform shared stewardship activities as well as collaborative planning. Um, it's a national initiative and it's a way to pro provide some consistent framework on evaluating and case, classifying watershed condition across national forest lands. It's a GIS based analysis, so it's um, fairly coarse. It's not statistical or a scientific model but it does base, on, does base its um, rationale on the calls of condition on a lot of um, models and, and um, forest plan um, watershed condition indicators. But it is, not, it is not driven or mentioned by the forest plan which came, preceded this, this uh, watershed condition framework. So the analysis results in a rating um, of each of each sub watershed, and each sub watershed is at the sixth level or the 12 digit huck. And so these are small sub watersheds within the greater North Fork Payette watershed, and they range from anywhere from 10 to 40,000 acres in, in in size. So the framework is a six step adaptive management process where you classify the watershed condition in step A, you identify priority watersheds in step B, and develop watershed action plans in step C, implement watershed action plans, track them, and then monitor and verify them. And today we'll just be talking about the first step, which is watershed condition classification. So, Watershed condition is the state of the physical, biological characteristics and processes within a watershed that affect the, the soil hydrologic function supporting aquatic systems. Um, the, w, the watershed condition uh, classification divides um, or ranks uh, these sub watersheds into three classes based on their function. So they can be uh, class one function properly functioning, class two functioning at risk class three impaired function. And so in the map on the right, we're looking at the kind of the user interface um, 
that is uh, web accessible. All these links will be at the end of my presentation and available. And so this is a, a little uh, outshot of the actual the North Fork Payette watershed, and then those those uh, those ratings, which will go into uh, how we get to those ratings right now. So the watershed condition class is based on um, two processes, aquatic and terrestrial. So each 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 one of those are broken down into four process groups: aquatic, physical, aquatic biological, terrestrial physical, terrestrial biological. And each each of those process groups are weighted. And as you can see, the weight is is 60% towards the aquatic, since this is more of a watershed-based um, uh, class um, classification. So within each of these um, four process groups, there are 12 watershed indicators. And so under the physical processes, we, we look at water quality, water quantity, aquatic habitat. Under biological aquatic processes, we look at the biota and then riparian vegetation. In the terrestrial side of things, we look at road and trail network and their impacts on, on uh, sediment and whatnot as well as soil conditions, and then terrestrial biological, fire regime, forest cover range, terrestrial invasive species, and forest health. As you can see, that, that category there has only a 10% rating, so it it's really doesn't uh, weigh in as strongly and heavily as the other three um, process groups. So here's a general, here's a descriptor of each of those 12 indicators. And uh, so the first one is water quality, and it just explains in a little bit of detail what we're looking at. And then for water quality, it's the physical, chemical, biological components of the water quality. And so for this indicator, we often look to streams that are maybe impaired based on IDEQ, Idaho Department of Environmental Quality, that have impaired um, waters. Um, <clears throat> and then we look at water quantity. Um, so the free-flowing natural regime um, that can, maintains the magnitude and duration and timing, and those are waters that are not um, that are, are free of any impoundments or dams. Hey John, yeah. excuse me. Yeah. Sorry, uh, we've got about two minutes left in your presentation uh, time, okay. and uh, sure. the feedback's getting pretty pretty rowdy on our end with the fan. Yeah. And I know you can't help it, so I'm wondering if maybe we just pause your share screen. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so um, in the Upper North Fork Payette watershed, the base of the, the condition class, um, as you can see from the map, the green are properly functioning, whereas the yellow are functioning at risk, and then there's one impaired functioning um, watershed that's Lower Kenley Creek. Um, here's the run out of all the indicators and the rating. And uh, this this is all a web-based interface, so it's accessible. Um, there's some limitations to the watershed condition class in that it doesn't is not applied to public lands. And um, if it is uh, if the watershed does go onto public lands, it's rated the same as forest service lands. And then um, here we're looking at the watershed condition class uh, for those. For East Fork Lake, which is a function properly, and Lower Kenley, which is impaired function, impaired function, and it, and it directly relates to those management prescription areas. Uh, 1.2 is recommended wilderness, and 5.2 is commodity lands, commodity production where we have timber sales. Sure. All right, John. It's uh, we've got. We're at your last minute. Yeah, perfect. The last slide. I'm getting some a request for. Um, the links, the links, people want to see what you've got to share. So um, thanks for putting that up there. Uh, and again, these links will be on our website. I've got a question for you, John, uh, from the group, uh, or two actually, if you have just a minute. Why don't you go ahead and stop screen sharing? We'll see if that can calm your motor down. Yeah. Okay, so the first question is um, regarding the announcement that Tamarack made. Oh, the announcement that Tamarack made regarding its expansion. How might this affect water, the quality of water into Lake Cascade, assuming there would be runoff? 
Um, I'm not too familiar with the Tamarack um, expansion. I know I know there's there's talk about possible Brundage expansion. Um, that's that is all on us. Most of that is state lands, and I don't I don't know if there's any expansion on Forest Service lands, but. Um, ski hills, they, they require clearing of land, um, and so uh, there, there is, there's a loss of, um, of cover, which can increase um, sediment delivery, but, uh, you know, there's, there's best management practices that they'd be required to do, I'm sure, to prevent and limit, limit that uh, inputs to Cascade Reservoir. Certainly, and uh, one last question, what do you, in your opinion, what's the greatest impact from our national forest lands affecting water quality in the North Fork. I'm assuming this North Fork of the yeah. Yeah, I, I think there, there's those those certain areas that have uh, just legacy roads and um, there there are timber production areas. And so roads roads have a, a there's a definite link between sediment production and sediment delivery. Um, and so I would say roads roads and road services, uh, sediment generation, production, and uh, delivering the streams is probably uh, the greatest greatest impact, I think, out there. Excellent. Well, John, thank you for your time and sharing your expertise. And we'll have uh, this session recorded and we'll have your PowerPoint available to our audience on our website. So okay. thanks again. Yeah.